My first rebuild here in Madden 24 will be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Here is the offense we will be starting with, and obviously they have a couple really good weapons with Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, and Russell Gage is not a bad slot receiver, but obviously a couple years ago they were holding a Lombardi Trophy with Tom Brady, and now Baker Mayfield is the quarterback. On the defensive side, they've got a few nice veterans here like Vita Vea, Shaq Barrett, and Levante David. They also have first round pick Kalaja Kansi, but middle linebacker Devin White did request a trade this offseason, and we are going to honor that. Aside from that, I like our safeties, but our corners don't have much depth. We have some pretty solid ones with Dean at an 85 and Davis at an 81, but past them, it goes down to a 67 overall. Throwing middle linebacker Devin White pretty much on the trade block, I'm not seeing any of these trades that I really like here. There are a couple that were tempting, like Trey Herndon to get another defensive back, and then over here, we also have an offer to get Chandon Sullivan, but I'm really just looking for a draft pick, so we're going to see if one of these teams are willing to just give us a couple draft picks for him. Looking through all the teams, Buffalo seems to not have a great middle linebacker option. They have Dorian Williams, a rookie, I believe, out of Tulane only 68 overall and I tried to work out a trade with them but they have no cap space but I was able to find a team with some cap space the Indianapolis Colts starting middle linebacker right now is a 69 overall so let's see if we can send Devin White there let's see if the Colts are going to take a third round pick for Devin White so we will submit this trade offer and it looks like it has gone through so we get the Colts third round pick this year and they get Devin White well, this is definitely a surprise cut here. I was looking in free agency and Kaiser White did not make the Cardinals final 53 man roster. So we're going to go and add him to ours. We're going to make one more sign in here. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but the starting right tackle on Tampa Bay right now is not very good. He's a high 60 overall. So we're going to bring in George Fant to hopefully not have Baker Mayfield get completely killed this year. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, you guys know that I am a massive Oklahoma Sooners fan and a massive fan of Baker Mayfield, but I'm also not completely and totally stupid. I am fully prepared to draft a new quarterback if Baker does not play well. I see he's only a 73 overall in his sixth year in the league, probably not going to get a whole lot better. However, drafting a new quarterback may prove to be a problem because Andrew Cobb is the only one rated anywhere in the first round. The second best quarterback right now is projected in rounds three to four. I am scouting all of these guys, so maybe we'll find a gem down here. But as of right now, Cobb is far and away the best quarterback. From what I've been able to tell so far on Madden 24, playbooks play a lot lower of a factor in simulation this year, which is obviously a good thing. The only thing that I think is still a little bit messed up is Cooper Cup still tends to put up monstrous numbers for the Rams, and then the Cowboys are pretty constantly dominant, which is a little weird, but you know, whatever. I don't know if it's their playbook or just the way the Sim handles the Cowboys, but we're going to simulate with the regular Buccaneers offensive and defensive playbook and schemes. Well, at the very least, they have fixed the Buccaneers playbook. Baker Mayfield, less than 3,000 yards, 17 touchdowns to 14 interceptions. Obviously, we were not a very high-powered offense. Rashad White with 800 yards and 7 touchdowns. Chase Edmonds with 4 touchdowns. Receiving Mike Evans, 780 yards and 9 scores. I believe that will be the first time in his career he goes under 1,000 yards. Russell Gage, 700 yards and 2 touchdowns. Chris Godwin only caught a single touchdown this season. K. Dotton caught three and David Moore caught one. Kaiser White actually ends up leading the team in tackles with 132 and sacks Shaq Barrett got nine, Golston got six, and then interceptions Ryan Neal came away with four to lead the team. Dak Prescott leads the league in passing yards with 4,600. We actually have no one go over 5,000 yards this year in touchdowns. That also goes to Dak Prescott with 48. He does this pretty much every year in simulation right now. Hopefully EA patches that. I'm fine with Dak Prescott occasionally going off. I know Dak Prescott's a pretty solid quarterback, but doing this every single season is a little bit insane. Leading the league in interceptions would be Mac Jones with 18. Running the ball, Jonathan Taylor got 1,800 yards, and then most touchdowns goes to Josh Jacobs with 22. Receiving Cooper Cup with 110 catches, 1,400 yards, and 14 touchdowns. The most catches on the year goes to Justin Jefferson, though, and most touchdowns goes to Michael Gallup with 18, and C.D. Lamb with 16 in second place. We finished season one, five and 12 and last place in the division. We had the 31st offense in points per game, the 31st offense in passing yards per game and the 30th offense in rushing yards per game. Obviously, we have to make a lot of changes this season. This year's Super Bowl will be a rematch of Super Bowl 47 between the Ravens and the 49ers. Hopefully the power doesn't go out during this one.
This time, the 49ers walk away as Super Bowl champions, led by Super Bowl MVP, Mr. Irrelevant quarterback, Brock Purdy. The NFL MVP goes to Zach Prescott. Coach of the year goes to Brandon Staley for the Chargers. Offensive player of the year is Jonathan Taylor. Defensive player of the year is Micah Parsons. Offensive rookie of the year is Bajon Robinson. And defensive rookie of the year is Garrett Williams. We now get to head into the first offseason of this rebuild where we start with $38 million in cap space, but we have 22 players ready to negotiate new contracts. And I think a lot of this team is about to change. Mike Evans is 31 years old, still an 89 overall. We'll look at bringing him back here in just a second, but guys like Antoine Winfield and Ryan Neal, neither one of them want to come back here. Same with Joe Tryon Shoyenica. I don't know if I'm saying his name right, Levante David does want to come back, but he's 34 years old. Greg Gaines, our defensive end, wants to come back. Kaiser White doesn't want to return, and Baker Mayfield does not want to return. If Mike Evans will take this one-year contract, I am willing to do that. But at 31 years old, I'm not going to lock you into a three-year deal, especially because you're just going to start declining here. So we'll make this offer, and he is going to be testing free agency. Not much of a shock here. Levante David only wants a one-year contract, so that's exactly what we're going to offer him, just the regular neutral medium risk contract, and Levante David will be coming back. We're going to offer Antoine Winfield the player-friendly deal here. I know he has no interest in coming back whatsoever, but let's see if we can manage to bring him back with money, and he will be returning. So I actually just noticed that Joe Tryon Shoyanica is a fifth-year option. I'm still not used to those being on this stage, but we're going to go ahead and accept that one. However, everyone else here will be hitting free agency. I thought about trying to bring back Ryan Neal, but he's 28 years old and 82 overall, a superstar death trait, which is nice, but I don't think he's going to get a whole lot better, and I want to see if we can find someone in the draft or maybe free agency to replace him. Joe Tryon Shoyanica, we obviously just accepted that fifth year option. Greg Gaines, Kaiser White, and Baker Mayfield are all going to be leaving, so obviously we will be looking for a new quarterback. We are also going to free up $17 million in cap space by finding a trade partner for Shaq Barrett. He's 31 years old, 79 overall. We're just going to go into a complete rebuild here. On the Texans, Barrett would immediately be their best left outside linebacker, so let's see if we can make a deal. This is one of those offers I'm just calling them and seeing if they accept. I highly, highly doubt they're going to take this offer, but let's see if we can get a third round pick from them, and that's exactly what we will get for it. That trade bumped us up to having about $29.2 million in cap space, and obviously you can see some of the top free agents here like Rashawn Gary, Mike Evans, Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, so the Chargers are just going to completely rebuild their receiver room apparently. The top quarterbacks available don't look that good. The best one here is Kirk Cousins at a 77 overall, then you have Baker Mayfield, then you have Sam Darnold, Jacoby Brissett, Teddy Bridgewater, Mariota, Winston, and then past that, everyone's under a 70 overall. Looking at the free agent list for quarterbacks made me really want to go look at the available quarterbacks in the draft, but I had to know what draft pick we hold. So we have the number five pick, and apparently that trade we just made with the Texans, we actually got Philadelphia's third round pick instead of Houston's. Well, this is not really what we were looking for. Andrew Cobb has a talent grade of round two to three. Addison Harrington, we don't know his yet, but with that C deep accuracy, I imagine it's not going to be great. This guy's projected to go undrafted, and I don't see any hidden gems down here at all. Looking at the attributes for very clearly who is the best quarterback in the class, Andrew Cobb, B awareness, B deep accuracy, B medium accuracy, A short accuracy, B throw under pressure, and B trucking. The B awareness is really the only thing that really concerns me here. Well, maybe we actually have a competition here for best quarterback in the class. Addison Harrington, who's projected to go in rounds three to four, does come in with A awareness, B medium accuracy, A short accuracy, C deep accuracy, which is a little bit concerning, but A play action, B throw under pressure, he might be a pretty solid quarterback. Now we'll jump over to free agency, where I've offered a contract of Paris Campbell, Grant Delphin, and Anthony Walker Jr. Let's see if any of these guys are going to take that offer. And the only one left here is Paris Campbell. The other two have signed with us. I upped the money for Paris Campbell just a little bit, so let's see if he picks us over Chicago here in Stage 2. And he is gone, and he has signed with us. That is going to be the only moves we make in free agency. Rashawn Gary is headed to Chicago. Mike Evans is now a Viking, so they have Justin Jefferson, Mike Evans, and Jordan Addison. That is a terrifying combination. Mike Williams is headed to Detroit. Keenan Allen is headed to Houston. Christian Wilkins is now a Steeler. Josh Allen is now a Titan. Bobby Wagner is a Lion. And then finally, Gabe Davis is also a Texan. 
the final mock draft here of the season i know i haven't showed any of the other ones but i just want to see who they mock us to take here at pick five we are being mocked to take quarterback andrew cobb before we start the draft, I did use a private workout on quarterback Addison Harrington. His talent now lists as day three, which can obviously still be in his projection of round three to four. Could be an early fourth round pick. A awareness, A play action, A short accuracy. Really, the only thing that really concerns me about him is the C deep accuracy and C throw on the run. The New England Patriots apparently ended up with the first overall pick this year. So let's see who they are going to take with the number one pick in the draft. They end up taking a left tackle out of Clemson. Let's see who the Cardinals go with pick number two. They're going to end up drafting a defensive end out of Wake Forest. With pick number three, the Houston Texans are going to take an outside linebacker out of Arkansas. With pick number four, the Miami Dolphins will end up taking a right outside linebacker out of Alabama. So now we are on the clock. This decision could make or break this franchise rebuild. We have quarterback Andrew Cobb with his B awareness and better throwing stats. But then we also have quarterback Addison Harrington with his A awareness, slightly lower stats, but that A awareness to me is a big thing in simulation. Some of these trade offers are absolutely insane. The Vikings are willing to give us two first round picks. We would not have a first round pick in this draft though, but I like seeing these six trade slots be used here. I'm really not looking to move as far back as most of these teams are offering me. The closest pick we have is the Titans, and I don't like everything else they're giving me here. The Bears offer is kind of tempting as well to pick up an extra fourth round pick, but if you've never seen my rebuilds before, I only pick the first three rounds and then I let the computer take over from there just because I'm not great at drafting and honestly in the later rounds it feels like a lot more luck than anything and I really just would rather the computer handle that. Looking through these trades again, there's just nothing that I feel like is worth moving up to pick number five. The Bears want to move up 10 spots, but they're only offering a 4th and a 7th. The Vikings are not even offering a pick in this draft here. The Titans are offering the 13th pick, but then a 5th and 2 7th. Let's go see if we can make a trade of our own. Alright, I will give them credit for the fact that it is a lot harder to trade in this game. I've been negotiating with teams for about 10 to 15 minutes. No one was willing to budge to give up a future first round pick really at all and a first round pick in this draft. I tried the Vikings, the Bears, and the Titans, but we're just going to settle on this. We will give them the fifth pick in the draft and a third round pick in exchange for pick number 11 and a second round pick. Will they finally take this? I am so tired of negotiating with teams and it's still not enough. I will add in a fourth round pick for next year. I just want to move up into the second round because I like having second round picks. I feel like there's a lot of talent in that round. So we'll offer this and finally the trade has been done. So now we can see who the Vikings have traded up to take and with the fifth pick in the draft, the Minnesota Vikings will select a defensive end. They don't even take Andrew Cobb. Let's see who is going to take Cobb. The Commanders with the sixth overall pick take an outside linebacker out of Notre Dame if I can talk. And I really don't like how much Cobb is falling right now. With the seventh pick, the LA Rams will take quarterback Andrew Cobb. So now we'll jump to pick 11 and see where we want to go. Our first pick in this franchise will be left tackle Marshall Nixon out of North Carolina State. And we will select him and hopefully he comes up with a hidden depth trade. And yes, he will. I know they just won the Super Bowl, but we're going to take this trade with the 49ers here and pick up a first round pick for the next season. The only other team offering us a first round pick is the Philadelphia Eagles. And I've seen before that in season two, Jalen Hurts can go off and win an MVP. So I'd rather take the risk on the 49ers here. Now, just a few picks later, the 49ers at pick 11 want to trade back up again. We're going to go ahead and take this trade as well. This is going to be a bit of a reach and could very well break this entire rebuild if I don't get this pick right. But we're going to take quarterback Addison Harrington at the end of the second round just because I'm afraid he's going to be gone by our next pick in the third round. So let's see if he comes up with a hidden dev trade. He will have a normal dev trade. He is going to be not very good, huh? Now in the third round with pick 21, we're going to take outside linebacker Leon Saxton out of Alabama, who comes in with B block shutting and A tackle, but a normal dev trade. Just a few picks later, we have right guard Jeremy Sheldon out of Miami. He has B awareness and B pass block. I know not the best blocking stats, but is the strongest guard in the class. And in the past, these guys ended up being pretty solid most of the time. So we're going to take right guard Jeremy Sheldon and he will come in with a hidden dev trade. 
The 49ers apparently want their third round selection back here. They're the only ones offering us a third round pick for this selection. So we're going to go ahead and take this one and pick up a third round pick for next year because I don't see anyone on the board that I'm absolutely dying to have. Addison Harrington was not the best draft pick I have ever made in my life. He comes in as a 68 overall, currently has plus two to his overall to boost it up to a 70. I don't know if that'll be there when the season starts though. But I feel like the rest of the draft went pretty solid for us. We got a 74 overall left tackle, a 74 overall outside linebacker, and a 74 overall guard. Past that, the computer took over and got a 68 overall defensive end, a 66 overall running back, a 70 overall corner, a 62 defensive tackle, a 69 wide receiver, and a 65 running back. The best player in the draft was a running back that Cincinnati took with the 29th pick. Well, I think I was a little bit smart to avoid Andrew Cobb. I did not really trust his ratings, and with that normal dev trade, I would have been really upset to spend a first round pick on a quarterback and not have a hidden dev trade. It looks like Harrington gets to keep his boost here as we start season two. The offense obviously looks a little bit worse to me because we lost Mike Evans. I do think Chris Godwin can be a number one receiver though, so I guess we're gonna find out this season. Here will be the defense for season two. Honestly, I don't expect a lot from the team this year. I think we're still in a pretty big rebuilding phase. And I will say I'm not 100% committed to Harrington at quarterback just yet. That's one of the reasons I didn't want to spend a first round pick on Cobb is because when you do that, you're kind of tied to the quarterback for a few seasons. The end of the second round, I'm not as tied to him as I would be had I spent the first round pick on Cobb. So if there is a top tier quarterback in the next draft and we are available to take him, we'll probably look into it. Honestly, Harrington didn't play near as bad as I thought he would. 3,700 yards, 23 touchdowns, and 16 interceptions. Obviously, that's a ton of picks, but that's a pretty solid season from a quarterback taken at the end of the second round. Running the ball, Rashad White ran for 700 yards and one touchdown. William Callaway, our rookie running back, got eight touchdowns on the season. Receiving, Chris Godwin goes over 1,000 yards and gets 10 touchdowns. Paris Campbell got four, Russell Gage got four, Palmer got two. Now over on defense, what happened? Levante David led the team in tackles with 124. Sacks is going to go to Via Veda with 11 and a half, and I think I screwed up his name. Interceptions goes to Grant Delpit, who came away with four. Once again, Dak Prescott leads the league in passing yards with 4,400. Touchdowns goes to Patrick Mahomes, who threw 42 touchdowns, only five interceptions. And Kenny Pickett got picked off 23 times to lead the league. Running the ball, Josh Jacobs got the most yards with 1,500, but touchdowns goes to Bajon Robinson in just his second year in the league with 21. Receiving, Devontae Smith got the most yards with 1,500, and touchdowns goes to Tyler Boyd and Travis Kelsey, who both caught 17. We have somehow snuck into the playoffs this year at 9-8. and eight. We get in as a wildcard team. Atlanta went 12-5, and five, winning the division in a runaway fashion but we come in as the sixth seed this year, so we're not even the worst playoff team. However, we sadly lose in the wildcard round 25 to 31, so we did play them pretty close. Addison Harrington, 200 yards and two touchdowns in his playoff debut, not a bad start, but Kyler Murray comes up with a perfect passer rating, going 19 for 23, 297 yards and three touchdowns. And this season's Super Bowl will be between the one seed Dallas Cowboys and the one seed Kansas City Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes has another Super Bowl ring. They win 31-28 over Dallas, led by Super Bowl MVP, defensive tackle Chris Jones. NFL MVP goes to Mahomes. Coach of the Year goes to McCarthy. Offensive Player of the Year goes to Lamar. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Miles Garrett. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to a wide receiver in Buffalo. And Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to a left end in Arizona. Before we jump into this offseason, we do have a couple retirements to look at. Center Ryan Jensen has retired and middle linebacker Levante David. But we have plenty of cap space, I believe, to try to replace them. We have $141 million to use and nine players are ready to negotiate. Well, we may not have as much money going into the offseason as I thought. We need to re-sign our left tackle, our wide receiver Chris Godwin, and one of our best defensive backs. The first one we're going to offer is wide receiver Chris Godwin. He has a lot of interest in coming back here, so we'll offer him this four-year deal, and he will be returning. Next up is defensive back Carlton Davis, who just wants a one-year contract. I am willing to do that here, and he will also be returning. Now, left tackle Tristan Wirfs. We're going to offer a player-friendly deal because he doesn't have a ton of interest in coming back here, but at 95 overall left tackle, we're going to need to pay him, so we'll offer this contract, and he will also be coming back. 
everyone else on this list though will be hitting free agency so we will go in with about 90 million dollars our quarterback addison harrington went from a 68 to a 71 overall but he is still a normal depth trait currently has a boost of plus three but once again don't know if that'll be there when the season starts these are the five contracts going out in the first stage of free agency here we're gonna try to get rashad bateman harrison phillips Cater Kohu, I have no idea if I said your name right, Devin Bush, and Mason Cole. Let's see if any of these guys are going to sign here. If it actually wants to advance, it's taking a minute. They are all gone, and they have all five signed with us. We got two more contracts going out, one to Joe Mixon and one to wide receiver Brandon Cook. So let's see if either one of these guys are going to take their offers. Not yet, but we are still leading them, so we'll go right to stage three, and one of them is gone. Did we land him? It does not look like it. And Brandon Cooks is still here, which means Joe Mixon has most likely signed with the Minnesota Vikings. Going to the final stage, we do land wide receiver Brandon Cooks, so this will be our entire free agent class for this season. The free agency recap, Joel Batonio. I don't know if I said his last name right. I think I did, but either way, he is now a member of the Carolina Panthers. Ward is a member of the Dolphins. Wyatt Teller is a Ram. Josh Sweat is now a member of the New York Jets. And Joe Mixon, as we saw, goes to Minnesota. Tua is also a Ram, and then let's see if there's any other big names. Not really. Following the trades we made during the last draft, we have the 49ers 16th overall pick. We have our 19th overall pick, and then we also have a 49ers third round pick. One downside to me not being fully committed to Harrington last season is I made sure I scouted every single quarterback, and it looks like Callum Allen, the fourth quarterback on the list, seems to be the best one, but he has C awareness. So maybe it's CJ Bauer or Kenny Thurston, but none of these guys I don't think are good enough for me to trade up and draft. So we will roll with Addison Harrington for at least one more season, but we do have two first round picks to try to get him some help this year. And with the 16th pick, we're going to get him a brand new center in Manny Tafoya out of Texas A&M. He comes in with A awareness, A run block. He's got a few other nice attributes too, like A lead block, A run block power. And then he is also one of the strongest centers in the class. So we're going to go ahead and take him. And Manny Tafoya will come in with a hidden dev trade. With our next pick in the first round, we're going to use it on defensive end Clyde Candidate out of Oklahoma. A block shedding and A tackle, B power move. And he's a scheme fit. I think this is going to be a really good player. And Clyde will come in with a hidden dev trade. Now in the second round, middle linebacker Cameron Porter might be a bit of a reach. He's projected in rounds three to four, but he does have B block shedding, A zone coverage. He also has A hit power, A awareness, C play rec, which isn't great. And then his physical stats are pretty solid as well. We're going to go ahead and take this risk. It could be a reach, but we're going to take Cameron Porter to be our new middle linebacker. And he will have a hidden dev trade. In the third round, I'm going to take another middle linebacker. We do want a 3-4 scheme, so maybe both of these guys can start. But Sheldon Burton out of Texas A&M has B block shedding, C pursuit, and A zone coverage. He does have A to C tackle, which is a bit concerning, but he also has A awareness. And then his physical traits also aren't too bad. So let's go ahead and take Burton here, and he will also come in as a hidden dev trait. The final pick that I will be making in this draft will be outside linebacker Desmond French out of Virginia Tech. B block shedding and B tackle. We're going to go ahead and take him and he will come in with a normal dev trade. Well, I feel like this was a pretty solid draft again. Manny Tofoyo is a 76 overall. Candidates a 73. We got a 74 overall middle linebacker and a 73 overall middle linebacker. And then French is a 67. By far the worst player I took. The computer then took a 68 overall tight end, a 67 overall safety, and a 69 overall receiver. The best player in the draft was Andrew Johnson, a defensive back that the Ravens took with the 29th pick who comes in as a 77 overall. Let's just take a look at the quarterbacks that I passed up on. The Commanders took CJ Bauer with the third pick in the draft. He comes in with a hidden dev trait, 93 throw power, and decent accuracy. I did think Kenny Thursden was going to be a pretty highly rated quarterback. He's a 76 overall with a hidden dev trait, and he comes in with 95 throw power and even better accuracy ratings. And then there was Will Graham, the quarterback the Lions took, and he comes in as a 72 overall with a normal dev trait and 94 throw power. So far, I'm not upset about passing on any of these quarterbacks. The Packers ended up taking Callum Allen with the 21st pick. I did have an opportunity to draft him, but didn't think he was going to be that good, especially with his C awareness, and he comes in as a 71 overall with a normal dev trait. So really, the only one I'm kind of upset about missing on is Thurston, but even then, I don't think he's that much better than the guy we have. 
Here is the offense for season three of this rebuild. Harrington still a 75 overall, so he's keeping that boost that he had. Godwin still the number one receiver. We have now added Brandon Cooks as the number three receiver. Still need to upgrade tight end. K. Dotton's been the tight end the whole time, but I haven't really found any that I really would like over him. And then on defense, we got three hidden dev traits. Candidate will back up Harrison Phillips this season, but Burton and Porter will both start over Walker and Bush. We somehow managed to sneak in as a wild card last season. I don't really know what to expect this season from the team, but let's see if we can manage to get back into the playoffs. Harrington did not get any better this season. 3,500 yards, 22 touchdowns, but 26 interceptions. He threw 14 in his rookie year, obviously hit a sophomore slump this year. Running the ball, Rashad White got 800 yards and a touchdown. Callaway got four touchdowns. Tucker ran in for two and Otten ran in for one. So in total, we got what, nine rushing touchdowns the entire season? Not exactly great. Receiving Chris Godwin, 80 catches, 900 yards and six touchdowns. Paris Campbell, 780 yards and five scores. Bateman got four. Otten got two. Brandon Cooks caught 23 passes and one touchdown. Over on defense, it looks like Cameron Porter, the rookie, led the team in tackles, which is pretty good for us. In sacks, Joe Tryon Shoyanica got seven and a half. And interceptions, Cameron Porter got two. Winfield got two. And Carlton Davis got two. Well, I don't know what happened to the Cowboys this time, but Dak Prescott is not leading the league in passing yards. That goes to Patrick Mahomes with 4,800. Touchdowns goes to Mahomes, who threw 42 touchdowns and just two interceptions. You may have to up that amount, Madden. That's that's a little bit too low for realistic stats here. Josh Jacobs with 1,700 rushing yards leads the league, and touchdowns goes to A.J. Dillon, who is now in Buffalo with 17 of them, receiving... Most receptions goes to Cooper Cup, most yards goes to Cooper Cup, and most touchdowns goes to Debo Samuel with 15. And clearly something went massively wrong with the team this season. We finished the year 2-15, by far our worst year, but we should have a pretty good draft pick. This season's Super Bowl will be between the Buffalo Bills and the Philadelphia Eagles. As an Eagles fan, I'm happy to see that. Jalen Hurts and the Philadelphia Eagles have won the Super Bowl behind Super Bowl MVP middle linebacker Taylor Wilbur, whoever that is. The NFL MVP goes to Lamar Jackson, Coach of the Year goes to Nick Sirianni, Offensive Player of the Year goes to Lamar Jackson, Defensive Player of the Year goes to Micah Parsons, Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to a wide receiver for the Browns, and Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to a defensive back for Buffalo. Going into this offseason, where we obviously need a lot of help here, we have $90.1 million in cap space and 17 players that are ready to negotiate. Well, looking through all of these players, I think I'm going to let everyone walk right now. We may try to bring a couple of them back in free agency, but for right now, I'm not too tied down to any of these guys. And yet again, if you were hoping for me to draft a quarterback in this draft, there is not a lot of top tier talent. I don't even see anyone that could pass for top tier talent right now. Real quick, I'm just going to go double check something. If we go over to franchise settings, edit draft class strength. Let's just make sure that's still on normal right now, because that is several drafts in a row now where there has not been a really, really good quarterback prospect and everything is still set on normal. There are also not any good options in free agency. The best one available is Geno Smith at a 75 overall, and obviously it's just downhill from there. The five contracts going out in this free agency are to tight end Adam Troutman, running back James Cook, outside linebacker Matthew Judon, defensive back Carlton Davis, and then wide receiver Debo Samuel. Now, he doesn't have a ton of interest in coming here, but I have a lot of interest in him coming to us. So let's see if he can manage to sign that contract Everyone is gone, and we don't land Debo Samuel. Not much of a shock, but we do land Carlton Davis, James Cook, and Adam Troutman. We're just waiting on Matthew Judon, and we're probably not going to get him because the commanders have offered way more, or he has way more interest. I took off Matthew Judon, and there's not really any other outside linebackers that I'm super interested in, but Quez Watkins is here, 97 speed, maybe a nice weapon for our quarterback, whoever that may be, and Watkins is gone because he has officially signed with Tampa Bay. At the free agency recap, we can see that Debo Samuel has elected to go with the Giants instead of us. Darius Slay is headed back to Philadelphia. Tyler Smith is now a Cardinal, and Teron Johnson is a Raider. There were not a lot of big-name free agents available this year. I went for the biggest name, but he had really no interest in coming here. Despite going 2-15, we don't even get the number one pick. We can't even tank correctly. 
The Raiders apparently also went 2-15 on the year, so due to some sort of tiebreaker, they get the number one pick. I cannot believe the quarterback classes we have had so far in this rebuild. The best one was Kenny Thursday last season, and he was just a 76 overall with a hidden dev trade. The Raiders hold the number one pick as we've already discussed, so let's see who they are going to go with. With the first pick in the draft, the Las Vegas Raiders are going to select. Taking a while, left tackle Billy Barton out of Texas. Most of the guys projected in the top five here are offensive linemen, and I feel like our offensive line is pretty well set. We have a lot of young guys with star dev traits, so we're going to take this trade with the Texans and fall back to nine and pick up a second and a fourth round pick this year. And now with the ninth pick, we're going to take outside linebacker Kevin Prince. I feel like this is probably a pretty big risk. It's a massive position of need at left outside linebacker. He does have B play rec and A pursuit. We don't know his awareness. So this is a pretty big risk, I feel like. But we're going to take Kevin Prince anyway, and he will have a hidden dev trade. At the beginning of the second round here with pick two, we're going to take defensive end Trayvon Barnard out of Wisconsin. He has A block shedding and A tackle and will come in with a normal dev trade, not what I wanted to see. A few picks later with the ninth pick in the second round, I am finally going to draft a tight end in this rebuild. Now I will preface this by saying, I don't think on recording I have ever drafted a decent tight end. So here's hoping Andrew Barber breaks that curse here. Projected in rounds two to three, he will be a normal dev trade. With the final pick that we will determine in this draft, I'm going to trade it to the Atlanta Falcons in exchange for a second round pick next year and a sixth round pick this year, also a seventh next year. But the main part of that trade is the second round pick next season. We ended up drafting a 75 overall left outside linebacker, a 74 overall defensive end, a 73 overall tight end, a 71 overall corner, and a 71 overall receiver. Now, this is when the computer took over, so they started off really good, then got a 69 overall running back, a 66 overall quarterback, a 66 overall defensive back, and a 69 overall receiver. The best player in the draft was Ronald Ross, a running back that the Lions took with the 30th pick, who was a 78 overall. Just so you guys can see how bad this quarterback class actually was, the highest rated one was Cody McDermott, who went in the sixth round and is a 67 overall. Before we really start season four of this rebuild, I'm looking at trading for Saquon Barkley. He does have a player tag of trade target veteran, so let's see what they want for him. And there we have it. With a first and a second round pick and a second round pick of the following draft, we land Saquon Barkley, so hopefully our running attack can open up. Following that trade, here is the starting offense for season four. I did look for a replacement at quarterback. I looked at everyone's backups. I looked at everyone's starters and there are no realistic trade options. So we will be rolling with Harrington for at least one more year. Here is what the defense looks like. I feel like we are slowly building it up. Porter is now a star dev trade, which is good. Burton apparently dropped down to a normal dev trade, which sucks. But we also have Prince starting at outside linebacker. And we'll see what dev trade he is following the season. A couple seasons ago, we went 9-8 and eight and managed to sneak into the playoffs. Well, last season we went 2-15 and 15 and ended up with the number two pick. I have no idea what this team is going to do. I just hope we're actually decent. It's hard to be worse than 2-15. and 15. Harrington played a lot better than he did last season. Yes, he threw for less yards and touchdowns with 3,100 yards and only 21 touchdowns, but he also only threw eight interceptions, so we will take that improvement. Saquon Barkley really helped out the offense, getting 1,400 yards and nine touchdowns. James Cook also found the end zone nine times. And then receiving, Chris Godwin goes over 1,000 yards and gets 10 touchdowns. Rashad Bateman caught 59 passes for 693 yards, but never in the end zone, apparently. Paris Campbell, 54 for 608 and six touchdowns. Troutman got a touchdown. Barkley caught two. Quez Watkins got one. Over on defense, how did they do? Cameron Porter led the team in tackles with 119. Sacks goes to Servakia Dennis. I have no idea if I said your name right. And interceptions, Cater Kohu got four. So did Grant Delpit and Carlton Davis. We have our first 5,000 yard passer, I believe, of this rebuild. And it is Jordan Love, who is now the quarterback in Miami, throwing for 5,063. Touchdowns goes to Joe Burrow with 39. And interceptions goes to Deshaun Watson with 23 of them. Running the ball, Jonathan Taylor ran for 1,600 yards. And he also led the league in touchdowns with 17, tying Jalen Hurts, who ran for 17 touchdowns as a quarterback. Wow, he had a ridiculous year. Leading the league in receptions is C.D. Lamb with 111. Yards goes to C.D. Lamb with 1,500. And touchdowns goes to Debo Samuel with the Giants, who caught 17. 
And this year we managed to win the division at 10 and 7 and obviously get into the playoffs based off of that. Let's see what seed we are actually in as and what seed Philadelphia will be as we play them. We get in as the four seed, so we take on the five seed Eagles behind Jalen Hurts, who is apparently having a terrific season. And that incredible season will actually continue as they win 20 to 16 over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Jalen Hurts did not throw a touchdown. Harrington threw two interceptions. He took care of the ball all season and then throws two in the playoffs. Let's see how many rushing touchdowns Jalen Hurts had, though. He had two rushing touchdowns. This year's Super Bowl will be between the seven seed Carolina Panthers and the five seed Kansas City Chiefs. The Carolina Panthers capture their first Super Bowl in franchise history, led by defensive back Larry Bird. All right, interesting name. The NFL MVP goes to Jalen Hurts. Coach of the year goes to Garrett Pratt for the Bears. Offensive player of the year goes to Jalen Hurts. Defensive player of the year goes to Micah Parsons. Offensive rookie of the year goes to a running back for the Patriots. And defensive rookie of the year goes to a defensive tackle for the Bills. Now we get to start the final offseason of this rebuild. This next season is Super Bowl or bust. We have $129 million in cap space and 19 players ready to negotiate. We do have to re-sign Saquon Barkley. Obviously, he was technically our first round pick this year. He's already down to a 91 overall, but hopefully for the last season of this rebuild, he can still help us. We'll give him a three-year contract and he will be coming back. We're also gonna offer Vita Vea a pretty big contract. He does not have much interest in coming back here. But let's offer him a two-year player-friendly player deal, but he is gonna be testing out free agency. Jamel Dean wants a one-year offer and that's exactly what we will give him and he will be returning. We will be taking the fifth year option on right tackle Marshall Nixon. I drafted him as a left tackle, moved him over to right tackle, and he's been there pretty much his entire career. And we bring back Kalaja Kansi, a three year player friendly deal, and he will be coming back. Obviously, losing a guy like Vita Vea is going to hurt a lot. We'll see if we can bring him back in free agency, but something's telling me that's not going to happen. And then everyone else, we're just going to let walk and see if we can upgrade. Of course, it takes all the way until the final offseason for a solid quarterback to show up. Quarterback Spencer Fisher out of Alabama, projected in the first round, is a top five talent. If you go over to physicals here, we can see that he has elite level speed and elite level throw power. He also comes in with A awareness, A short accuracy, A throw on the run, A throw under pressure. He is obviously a very, very good quarterback. Going into his fourth year, Addison Harrington's a 77 overall. He currently has a plus three overall boost, but a minus one to morale. So he's sitting at a 79 right now. And we really have to make the decision if we're going to do this last year with him or find a new quarterback. And there's not any real upgrades here in free agency. Daniel Jones would be an upgrade at an 81 overall, but I don't know if he's going to be enough to really get us over that hump here. The first contracts I'm throwing out here in free agency, which may be our entire free agent class, we're going to go after Zay Flowers, DeForest Buckner, Daniel Jones, and Matthew Bergeron. I really don't like going after Daniel Jones, but I think he's going to be better than if we can't get that other quarterback in the draft. We're really going to have to look at that. Well, let's advance to the next stage. They are all gone, and everyone is signed with us except for, I believe, the receiver. Let's go see. Zay Flowers has signed with the Dallas Cowboys. Well, we lost out on Zay Flowers, so I went back and was able to sign Keenan Allen and Paris Campbell. I know Keenan Allen's pretty old. I don't know how much he'll help this team, but I don't figure he can hurt it at all. The Dallas Cowboys were apparently pretty big spenders in free agency because not only did they land Zay Flowers, they also got Kyle Hamilton. Vita Vey is headed to San Francisco. Tyler Linderbaum is a charger. And then we have a couple punters. The Cleveland Browns hold the very first pick in the draft and let's see where the first few picks go because the quarterback we want honestly wasn't projected to go too early. The final mock draft had him going all the way down at 25. I don't know how accurate that is this year, but for right now we're just going to go pick by pick and see who everyone takes. And the Browns are going to take a defensive end out of Oregon first. The Denver Broncos with the second pick in the draft are going to end up taking Riley Buckley out of UCF. He was the top quarterback on everyone's board or at least on the main board. So I guess he's the number one quarterback on theirs as well. The Packers go with a defensive end out of Georgia. With the fourth pick, the New York Jets take an outside linebacker out of Georgia. With the fifth pick, the Giants are going to take a left tackle out of Mississippi State. With the sixth pick, the Seattle Seahawks are going to take a wide receiver out of Wisconsin. With the 10th pick, the Minnesota Vikings are going to select an outside linebacker out of UCF. With the eighth pick, the Arizona Cardinals are going to take 
Let's see, it's taken a while. Malik Harris, a wide receiver out of Alabama. And then with the ninth pick, the New Orleans Saints are going to select, I believe that is Todd Mullen, a defensive end out of Ohio State. I almost can't read that against their background. With the 10th pick in the draft, the Washington Commanders are going to select a defensive back out of Washington named Carlos Ivory. Now let's talk with the Falcons for a minute. Well, maybe we don't need to talk to Atlanta right now. They have an 81 overall quarterback, so I don't think they're going to take Fisher. The Falcons took a defensive back, and the Patriots have a 91 overall Mac Jones, so I'm pretty sure they are not going to take Fisher either. So let's see if they actually pass on him, and then we will check on Detroit's roster to see if they need a quarterback. But with each 12th pick in the draft, the New England Patriots will select a defensive back out of Missouri. Now the Lions have a 76 overall quarterback in Will Graham going into his third year. So maybe they'll look to take him, but I'm willing to take the risk that they won't just yet. Like I said, the mock draft had him going in like the mid 20s to Miami. So I'm not super concerned just yet, but let's see who the Detroit Lions take with the 13th pick. If they take him, I'm going to throw up. They take another defensive back. Now, I believe the Steelers still have Kenny Pickett at quarterback, so I doubt they go with him at pick 14. And I'm obviously just biding my time, waiting to try to trade up. I think we are just going to go ahead and trade up and get him. I just have to figure out where. And the Steelers have an 82 overall Kenny Pickett going into his sixth season. I think we're fine there. He has the player tag of a franchise quarterback. They shouldn't be looking at a quarterback here in the first round. So we'll advance to the next pick, and the Pittsburgh Steelers will end up selecting a defensive end out of Arizona State. The Texans have C.J. Stroud, so I'm not concerned about them. The Titans, I just went and looked at their roster. They have Deshaun Watson, so I'm not going to be concerned about them taking him either. But then the Baltimore Ravens should still have Lamar Jackson. They take Andrew Bird, an outside linebacker out of Oregon State. So let's go see who the Ravens have. If I'm not wrong, they should still have Lamar Jackson, like I just said because I feel like he's been putting up some pretty solid numbers. I think won an MVP or two in this video. So let's see, Ravens should be at the top of the roster. Yeah, they have a 99 overall quarterback in Lamar Jackson. They are not gonna spend this pick on Spencer Fisher. So now we will be able to jump right to the Chargers pick, who I believe still have Herbert because I have not seen him in free agency yet. And then we'll have the 49ers. So we're just going through a line of teams here that should have their quarterbacks. The 49ers still have Brock Purdy, so they should pass on him. The Giants still have Kenny Thursden as an 80 overall quarterback, so they should also pass on him. So we're going to go right to the Raiders pick, and then we'll go check on the Raiders roster and see who they have. The Raiders have an 80 overall in Will Levis, so they should also pass on Spencer Fisher. But we are getting real close to where he was mocked to go to Miami. We'll advance past this one, and then Cincinnati's on the board. They should have... Joe Burrow still. I will go double check them and the Cowboys. And then I guess I'll check the Colts as well. So the Bengals, the Cowboys, and the Colts are who we need to check here to figure out how their quarterback situations are going. So over in Cincinnati, they have a 99 overall Joe Burrow. I'm not concerned at all about that. The Colts have a 90, I'm sorry, an 86 overall Anthony Richardson. And then the Cowboys have an 84 overall Dak Prescott. He is going into his 12th year. So they could be looking to maybe get a younger quarterback but I doubt they're actually going to do that because EA does not have that kind of logic built into this game yet. But with the 22nd pick, the Cincinnati team will take a defensive tackle out of Alabama. With the 23rd pick, the Dallas Cowboys will select, let's see, another defensive tackle, this one out of Ohio State. And with the 24th pick, the Indianapolis Colts will end up selecting a tight end out of Miami. Now, we cannot let this next pick go to Miami. They are right there at pick 26, and they were mocked to take Spencer Fisher, as I've said multiple times. Let's see if we can get a trade worked out with Philadelphia. We have offered a second round pick this year and our first round pick in the next draft. Let's see if that's enough to move up to this spot, and it sure will be. And with this pick, we are going to take quarterback Spencer Fisher out of Alabama, and he will come in, please, with a hidden dev trait, 95 throw power, 94 speed. Just because you can never have enough linemen in the third round, we're going to take right guard Dion Rudolph out of Tennessee, and he will come in with a normal dev trade. Quarterback Spencer Fisher comes in as a 77 overall, currently has plus two to his overall to bump him up to a 79. 95 throw power, 80 deep accuracy, 82 medium, 85 short, 76 awareness, and then obviously down here, 94 speed. 
The rest of the draft, we got a 72 overall guard, a 68 overall outside linebacker, a 65 safety, a 72 overall running back, a 65 middle linebacker, and a 65 outside linebacker. The best player in the draft was a defensive tackle that was taken by the Bears at pick 28, and then Spencer Fisher is tied here with the second highest overall. Because we did draft a scrambling quarterback, I am changing our playbook to the Eagles playbook so we can actually use his legs a little bit in simulation. Here is your starting offense for the fifth and final season of this rebuild. Hopefully we finally have the quarterback situation figured out, but in order to consider this rebuild a success, Spencer Fisher is going to have to lead us to a Super Bowl as a rookie. The defense honestly doesn't look that much different from last season, aside from losing Vita Vea. That could be a huge loss for us, but I think DeForest Buckner is going to fit in nicely. The final season here of this rebuild, and we have yet to win a single playoff game, and now we need to go all the way to the Super Bowl. Hopefully it works out. Well, I just came to check out Fisher's dev trait, but he is apparently up to an 83 overall, a superstar dev trait, and with whatever boost he has going right now, is up to an 89 overall rookie quarterback. And he just had a terrific season. 4,000 yards, 40 touchdowns, only 6 interceptions. Running the ball, Saquon Barkley ran for 1,400 yards and 14 touchdowns. Spencer ran in for 8 touchdowns. And then receiving Chris Godwin, 71 catches, 1,200 yards, and 15 scores. Rashad Bateman found the end zone six times. Paris Campbell found the end zone four times. Saquon Barkley also got seven receiving touchdowns. Over on defense, Cameron Porter led the team in tackles. Sacks went to DeForest Buckner with 11. So I feel like, yeah, he fit in pretty nicely. And interceptions, Antoine Winfield came away with three, and so did Carlton Davis. Leading the league in passing yards is Patrick Mahomes with 4,700. Touchdowns goes to Spencer Fisher and interceptions goes to Thomas Fordham with 19, a quarterback for the Jets. Running the ball, Josh Jacobs got 1,600 yards and most touchdowns goes to Najee Harris with 20. And then receiving, who got the most passes? That would be Justin Jefferson with 127. Yards goes to CeeDee Lamb and touchdowns goes to Brandon Ayuk who caught 20. We finished this season 13-4 and, and don't have a game this week, which means we have earned the one seed and the bye week. This was an incredibly competitive division. As you can see, the Panthers went 12-5 and, and managed to not win the division with that record. The Panthers managed to continue this incredible season by winning 21-18, and now they will come to Tampa Bay in the divisional round. It took five seasons, but we have finally won a playoff game, and we had to do it in overtime, but we get by Carolina 30-24 in a very competitive matchup. Bryce Young threw a touchdown. Spencer Fisher only threw one touchdown. On the ground, Barkley ran for two, and Fisher ran for one. Now we get to take on the Dallas Cowboys, who were pretty busted in simulation most of the time here, so let's see if we can get to the Super Bowl in our final season of the rebuild. We get by the Dallas Cowboys 31 to 20 here. So let's see how everyone played in this game as we are now headed to the Super Bowl. Spencer Fisher threw two touchdowns and one interception on the ground. Saquon ran for a touchdown and so did Spencer Fisher. So our offense has been pretty exciting. But now we get to take on the Kansas City Chiefs in the Super Bowl to try to complete this rebuild. Before we find out if we can win a Super Bowl, I want to show you guys that now with all of his boosts and his current rating, Spencer Fisher is a 93 overall rookie quarterback. This is insane. Well, it's not going to be much to watch because with a minute to go in the fourth quarter, we're at 31 to 14. We come out in shotgun with a read option and Spencer Fisher to the outside will walk into the end zone and Tampa Bay is going to win the Super Bowl in blowout fashion. It took all five seasons and we didn't even win a playoff game until this year led by a rookie quarterback who fell in the draft all the way to I believe pick 25 before we finally decided to trade up and snipe him right out of the first round. This was the best quarterback that I ever saw in this uh, actual rebuild here because the first four classes in terms of quarterback strength there just wasn't really any. This was by far the best one I saw, decided to pull the trigger, and obviously it has paid off for us as our first rebuild here in Madden 24 ends in a Super Bowl victory.